Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Mike Norvell, this Florida State program, working their way through spring practice, and we're getting to the point where guys are starting to separate themselves and really put a stamp on what they're going to be for this Florida State program heading into the 2024 year. Want to talk about some players that are really generating some buzz through the first couple weeks of spring practice, and more importantly, talk about what that means for this Florida State program. Extremely excited to get into it. Before we do, and as always, just want to say thank you to you guys. A massive shout out to the Florida State fans. Y'all know I have a blast talking this program, whether it is in the transfer portal, on the recruiting trail, doing our film deep dives. Cannot thank you guys enough for rocking with the boys. The support you guys always show means the world. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, Let's get into this one, and I want to start with one of the most important players on this Florida State roster heading into the 2024 season. That's quarterback DJU. Now, I've been very vocal that I'm extremely excited about what Mike Norvell can do unlocking all the physical traits that DJU brings to the table. You saw the progress that Jordan Travis had at Florida State. What if we start to see that progress with DJU as well? We've already seen that progress, but what if we see him take another step? But what I really want to focus in on is reading the spring practice notes. The number one thing that you're hearing DJU do a very good job of, and that is pushing the ball down the field. And that is important for two different reasons for this Florida State program. One, you look at this Florida State offense, you look at what they want to do on the offensive side of the football in that passing attack. They want to push the ball down the field. Jordan Travis's average depth of target last year was 10 yards. That was one of the highest in the country. Kind of a comparison, Bo Nix came in at only 6.5. So it's no secret that Mike Norvell, this Florida State offense, they want to push the ball down the field. They want to make opposing defenses respect what they can do attacking that deeper third in the passing attack. But more importantly, you look at the wide receiver room, they got a bunch of wide receivers who are, I mean, kind of down the field specialists, right? You look at guys like Jalen Brown, Hakeem Williams, Malik Benson, you either have really big bodies that can go make those 50-50 balls, or you got burners that can really take the top off the defense. A lot of these wide receivers for Florida State are guys that can really excel down the field, whether that is with their size and strength or whether that is with their speed, kind of beating, beating guys vertically down the field. So when you start combining those two things, one wide receivers in that Florida State room being well suited to attack that deeper third, but more importantly, Mike Norvell in this offense wanting to stretch defenses vertically, hearing that DJU has been very, very good so far in spring practice, attacking down the field. That's massive news for the Florida State fans. Next player I want to go to, and a guy that I am extremely intrigued with heading into that 2024 year, and that is transfer wide receiver Malik Benson. If you were to ask me who is going to be wide receiver one for this Florida State program, you could have probably four or five different answers, right? Some guys will say a guy like Hakeem Williams. Some guys will say Malik Benson. You could go down that list. My answer would be Malik Benson. This is a guy that, I mean, you backtrack 12 months ago, Malik Benson was the talk of Alabama spring practice coming from the JUCO ranks. This is a guy that is 6'1". 200 pounds, runs a 10-4 in the 100-meter dash. You look at the size, the speed. He has some elite physical, elite physical traits, and if Malik Benson can put that together for Florida State, you're looking at I mean, one of the better wide receivers in the ACC and potentially in the country, and to hear that DJU Malik Benson are kind of building that rapport, I think that's massive for Florida State. More importantly for Malik Benson, he sounds like he's kind of – taking over the leadership role in that wide receiver room. It is a pretty young wide receiver room. Having a guy like Malik Benson, who's one at a high level at Alabama, I am really excited to see what he can bring to this wide receiver room. We've always said it, it is a loaded wide receiver room that has a ton of potential. Now the question is what guys are going to separate themselves and be kind of those alpha dogs in that room. Malik Benson sounds like he might be that guy. Next guy I want to talk about, and this is another another really exciting player. And again, it goes back to Mike Norvell did such a good job in the transfer portal. Jalen Lucas <laughs> coming from Indiana. Many of you guys know as a Michigan fan, Jalen Lucas, that 2022 game against Michigan 
was running circles around that Michigan defense. This is a guy with elite level juice with the football in his hand. Now you have a bunch of different playmakers for this Florida State program. It sounds like Jalen Lucas has kind of emerged as that chess piece in this Florida State offense. Is he going to be the lead running back for the Florida State Seminoles? Probably not. Is he going to be a lead wide receiver for Florida State? Probably not. But what he is going to be is a chess piece in this Florida State offense that can make those game-changing plays that win you those games. Right, And a guy like Jalen Lucas doesn't need any more than 15 touches a game, probably not even 10 touches a game, but he's going to provide some really, really big-time juice in this Florida State offense. And if there is a coach across the country that I trust to get Jalen Lucas in positions where he can excel, it's Mike Norvell. This is not only a player that's one of the fastest players on the football field. He's one of the most dynamic. He has elite short area quickness, elite elusiveness at the second level. For Mike Norvell, the biggest challenge with Jalen Lucas is getting him the football in spaces that he can operate successfully in, and I trust Mike Norvell to do it. It sounds like Jalen Lucas is already doing it in spring practice. You kind of just file this one under another elite guy on the offensive side of the football that can change games for Florida State. The last offensive player that I want to talk about is transfer TJ Ferguson coming over from Alabama now. The Florida State fans that have been rocking with the boys for a little bit know that I thought that Florida State team in 2023 was elite, right? You go right up and down that roster, elite defensive line, elite play in the secondary, elite wide receivers, great running back play, great quarterback play. If there was one position group that I don't think necessarily was bad, but it probably wasn't elite, was probably that Florida State offensive line. And yes, it had to do a lot with injuries, but I don't know if they had difference makers up front or that many difference makers. TJ Ferguson, although hasn't played a ton of football at the college football level, is a guy that I think could be a difference maker up front for Florida State. And again, there's a little bit of unknown because he hasn't played a ton of football at the the Power 5 level. But a guy like TJ Ferguson, I think, can be a difference maker. And to hear him kind of make some strides during spring practice, this is a guy that just hasn't played that much football, hasn't gotten that many reps with the number one teams going back to his time at Alabama. TJ Ferguson is one of those guys that I think could really find his stride at Florida State and kind of filing it, going over to the defensive side of the football and kind of having that same conversation as a guy that is super talented, can certainly be a difference maker. We just haven't seen it yet at the college football level. It's Marvin Jones Jr. coming from Georgia the reports that you hear out of spring practice got a little bit of a different burst and a little bit more different smoothness to him as an edge rusher. This is a guy similar to TJ Ferguson, who was very highly coveted coming out of high school, checks all the boxes that you want in an elite edge rusher, just needs more opportunity that he didn't get at Georgia during his first two years. This edge position for Florida State is very intriguing. I think a lot of people across the country are going to assume that you lose Jared Verse, this position gets worse. I'd argue, okay, you don't have a Jared Verse right now that you know of. Marvin Jones Jr., maybe Patrick Payton can emerge as that guy, but it's deeper, right? You talk about about guys like Payton. You talk about guys like Marvin Jones Jr., Sione Lolea, Tamiwa Deraje coming over from West Virginia. Those are four guys that are very good football players. And I'd argue that this edge group is deeper than it was last year. And I think that when you talk about Florida State and their goals that they have, which is winning the ACC, making a run in the college football playoffs, you got to have depth to play 14, 15 games of season. Not only can Marvin Jones Jr. add to the depth of that position, I think he can add to that high-level talent to that edge rusher position as well for Florida State. Last guy I want to talk about, and again, don't have many question marks about the secondary. I think that's going to be one of the better units that you see, again, not in the ACC, but in the country. We got a lot of questions at the linebacker position. Got to continue to read the spring practice notes at that position. Grady Kelly, and you'd file him under another guy that not only is providing depth, but I think can provide some pass rush on the inside. You lose a guy like Braden Fisk, Josh Farmer, Daryl Jackson. I like some of those players. What if, Which one of them on the inside is going to kind of provide that pass rushing juice? Grady Kelly 
could be one of those guys. This is one that guy plays with the hot, hot motor. He has a high, high level of effort. He's going to add depth to this unit. But more importantly, I mean, they had 17 quarterback hurries for Colorado State last year. Played at a very high level as a pass rusher for Colorado State last year. Can Grady Kelly come in and provide that pass rushing juice for Florida State? It sounds like he's standing out over the first couple of weeks. Another guy that kind of flew under the radar when Florida State grabbed him out of the transfer portal, but a guy that we could be talking about come October, November as a massive contributor for this Florida State program and how it kind of wrap this discussion up. And we had this conversation the other week with Florida State. There are a lot of people, the casual college football fans, if you will, that look at this Florida State roster and say, oh, they lose a guy like Jordan Travis, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, Jared Verse. High-level NFL dudes, Trey Benson, add him to the list. Yes, they lose some really good NFL talent from that team in 2023. But you look at this roster, Mike Norville getting a couple more recruiting cycles under his belt. This is a, a deeper team than we saw in 2023. And again, going back to Florida State's goals, not only having high-level players, but depth is going to be important for Florida State. When you want to win in the months of November and December, when guys are banged up, you got to have that depth. I think Florida State's deeper than it was last year, and I think that's what you're really excited about heading into that 2024 year. Y'all know I'm fired up for this. We'll continue to talk about spring practice as it plays out. Appreciate y'all rocking with the fellas. Again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.